Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Myself, Dr. Maimuna Azhar, the physiotherapist, and today I'm going to deliver a lecture on the subject of biomechanics. And the topic we are going to study today, it is really important clinical topic, which is being practically very much used in our uh, clinical lives when you people will be professionals and if you are, if the professionals are watching the video, it will be really helpful for them to identify that how they can use PNF techniques, what are PNF techniques and in what situations it is helpful and what are those uh, subtypes or the sub uh, mechanism and sub techniques of PNF techniques which are being used in practical lives. So now we are going to start from the word PNF. PNF means proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. It just means that you are facilitating your neuromuscular system and your proprioception. So there are some techniques which are really helpful in facilitating our neuromuscular system and our proprioception. PNF techniques basically works on the mechanism of Golgi tendon organ reflex which you guys have already studied that how the stretch effect the body and how our body relax after a stretch mechanism and after a Golgi tendon organ stretch. Uh, the PFNF techniques have different patterns which are being performed for the upper body and for the lower body. And the patient who are having the neurological deficits, for example, the patients with stroke or diaplasia or hemiplasia or the patient having paresis, the PNF techniques are having really effective uh, manners and methods which can help us in faster recovery. Different patterns are being used which are not mentioned in your book but I will let you know about some of the pattern for upper limb. It, the pattern names are D1 and D2 and both of the patterns are divided into two parts. D1 flexion, D1 extension. D2 flexion, D2 extension. So upper limb also contains these four and lower limb also contains these four. These are the basic patterns which are being followed. Let me just show you how these patterns are being maintained. Uh, I will just take one minute for letting you know the pattern. This is D1 flexion, D1 extension, D2 flexion, D2 extension. Let me just repeat it once again. D1 flexion, D1 extension, D2 flexion, D2 extension. So these are the patterns for upper limb someday. Um, I will let you know about the lower limb patterns and during these patterns, you can use some of the techniques and except for these patterns, if you want to stretch some muscles, if you want to gain the range of some muscles and if you want to relax some muscles, you can use the stretching methods for proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation techniques. So here I have mentioned four techniques, contract, relax and antagonist, contract, contract, relax, hold, relax and agonist, contract, relax. So starting from the contract, relax symbol. What is meant by contract, relax? Uh, this technique, I will apply all this technique in stretching some muscles. For example, uh, when the muscle is being stretched by the physiotherapist, the passive stretch is being done that you guys already know that. The passive stretch is being performed by the physiotherapist, not by the patient itself. So, a uh, physiotherapist stretch a muscle of a patient. For example, uh, for example, this of my, my this hand is the physiotherapist hand and this side is the patient side because I am not having any assistance. So I can guide you over myself. My this side, this side of my body is physiotherapist, and this side of my body is the physiotherapist body. And I want to stretch the tricep because it's really easy to stretch that muscle in this position. Tricep is the muscle which is present in this region, and I'm going to stretch this. This is the simple process. This is the active stretch. But now I'm going to start contract relax. Physiotherapist hand passively stretch the muscle, tricep. 
Now when it has reached an optimal place, when it has reached an optimal place, what will happen? The tricep will resist the motion. Now this motion is being produced by the tricep. The physiotherapist is just holding the side after giving a passive stretch and now the contraction is being done by the patient and that contraction would be active. Uh, its example can also be done on the hamstring that the physiotherapist is stretching the hamstring of the patient and after reaching a limit by the passive stretch, the patient itself actively contract the muscle, contract the hamstring and this phenomena will be known as contract relax. Another thing to remember is that when the uh, optimal stretch is being reached by the physiotherapist, at that point, the tricep muscle, when they are actively contracting by the patient, you can see the change in length. This length is changing. As when the patient is contracting the muscle after reaching an optimal place, the contraction being produced in that tricep, it will be isotonic. Isotonic means the length is changing. But in comparison with that, Contract relax is just like hold relax, but the difference only which is being present in there that the physiotherapist is taking the part in an optimal position by giving the passive stretch and after that the, you can notice, I think you can notice that at this point there is no change in length, but the muscle are being in contraction, are being in active contraction and that active contraction is known as isometric contraction. You guys might know the difference between isometric and isotonic. Isometric means the length will not change, muscle will contract. And in isotonic, the length will also change and muscle will contract. So the basic difference between contract relax and hold relax is that in contract relax, when physiotherapist stretch, give a passive stretch to a muscle after reaching an optimal place, the patient itself contract that particular muscle with isotonic contraction. But in hold relax, physiotherapist stretch a muscle and the patient itself contract that muscle isometrically means length is not changing. So this was the basic difference between both of them. Now moving towards the contract relaxed antagonist contract. Now, the word is telling that it would be half like contract relax. But what will happen that antagonist contract, antagonist is being involved in that, uh, in that place. So what will happen in such kind of technique? You, the physiotherapist is stretching, giving a passive stretch to the muscle of the patient. And now this passive stretch is being produced and reaching at optimal place, what will happen? The physiotherapist has taken the part into an optimal place, has given the passive stretch in an optimal place. Now the patient will deliberately, actively contract the muscle. But which muscle is present here? The muscle was being contracted in contract relax, the muscle was being contracted in hold relax. Now what is different between hold relax Contract relax and contract relax antagonist contract. So in this situation, after reaching an optimal place, after giving a stretch, the muscle which is going to be contracted by the patient actively, that muscle would be antagonist muscle. It is just like I'm giving a stretch to the tricep, the physiotherapist is giving the stretch to the tricep, it is reaching an optimal place. Now at that point, the stretch would be performed by the active contraction would be performed by the opposite muscle. Opposite muscle for the tricep is bicep. So the active contraction would be performed in the bicep. If you guys get to know about another example which can make you more clear about contract relax and agonist contract. As you guys know that the lower leg contains, consists of hamstrings on the uh, posterior region, posterior thigh and quadriceps on the anterior region. And you people are going to, for example, 
these are the quadriceps these are the hamstrings for hamstring stretch what is being done the physiotherapist is stretching the muscle this is the supine position the patient is in supine line and these are the hamstring and these are the quadriceps the physiotherapist is giving the passive stretch when the patient has reached this limit for the slr straight leg raise now what will happen at this point the contraction will be produced in the muscle that would be quadricep now when quadricep will contract you guys would know that the range would automatically increase because quadricep also produce flexion in the other situations for the contract relax i mean the hold relax when the physiotherapist take it to a particular position by uh, uh, giving the stretch passive stretch to the hamstring the ham the patient will actively contract that same muscle by isotonic change in contract relax and isometric change in the hold relax now moving towards the last part which is agonist contract relax what is meant by agonist contract relax in this situation agonist is being contracted and relaxed in the last situation in all these three in the starting uh, part what did you do that you applied the passive stretch to a particular muscle but in agonist contract relax the patient would do active stretch for example the patient is giving an active stretch to hamstring by uh, doing slr straight leg raise in the lower limb now when the patient has reached the maximum limit then the maximum range of motion physiotherapist will maintain that position so i hope you guys you will be clear about the pnf proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation and its some techniques the other name for contract relax and tagonist contract is slow reversal hold relax and when you are going to maintain that stretch when you are going to perform these stretches what you guys have to do you guys have to maintain it for the duration of 5 to 10 seconds the stretch should be maintained for 5 to 10 seconds and the pnf is being considered the best for stretching the muscles because because its results are really effective the research is say that it gives the very particular result in the very faster time and it gives the longer recovery so i hope you guys are clear about everything and if you guys have any query or any questions you can ask me directly and i would like to answer all of your questions thank you so much